So to the people that complain about, oh yeah, all these Californians came in and changed everything, you know. And that, Is that true? Well, they did. Yeah, they brought money. You know, I think it's mostly good. This is, this is, everything here is yours, right? Yeah. How, how is it, you know, to be an artist living in Prescott? What's up for me? Because I got to work here. But, um. <laughs> for a long time, Prescott uh, uh, took advantage of some laws that allowed you to put in a halfway house, and pretty much anybody could put in a rehab. Somebody caught, got caught using in one of the houses, they just kick them out, and then they'd be homeless. You know, a lot of the beautification here, putting in walking paths and stuff, makes it a, a harder place to camp. Super bizarre. Yeah. So it's got an elevator on the inside. That's Mount Humphreys, so flat, that's Flagstaff. Oh, look you at can that. see the city lights at Flagstaff from here. Like, you, don't, you don't want to see my generation suffer. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't. I think you guys are the smartest, most worldly, kindest, best generation that we've ever seen. A lot of people, when they reach my age, settle in, settle down, and start to protect your money. Bruce Lee said, if you love life, don't, don't waste time. Yeah. And that's the thing I, I'm always thinking of, like, there's not a minute to waste. What is going on, everybody? Today I'm in Prescott, Arizona. Today I am meeting up with Ron, who is a local to Prescott, has been a local for, I think, about... 15 years or more and uh, today we're gonna kind of explore the town of Prescott get to know what life is like in uh, this part of Arizona uh, it is really quite beautiful out in these parts and uh, I'm excited to show it to you nice car by the way Thanks. Love it. Yeah, so how, Ron, how long have you lived in Prescott? Well, I've been here for about uh, 19 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> it is for your average <laughs> Prescott resident. Um, I went to high school here for a couple of years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I uh, um, lived down in Tucson for a long time. Sure. And when we had my son uh, about 19 years ago, we realized uh, I didn't really like hearing gunshots at night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, actually, that so, is a huge thing um, out there. Hearing helicopters fly over and stuff. Sure. So my parents are still still up here, so we thought, well, why don't we move here instead? It's a good place to live, and it's a good place to raise kids. I yeah, think. it sure seems like, I mean, this is like an incredibly nice neighborhood. I mean, has it always been like this? Yeah. It's super posh yeah. like this? This Well, this neighborhood was built in the 80s. Okay. And uh, so the area where this group of houses is... And then these ones up on the hill popped up, you know, probably early 2000s for the most part. Yeah. So they're, uh, you know, they're, uh, we had the great views for regular people living up here. And then the, a Seriously. lot of doctors and lawyers and stuff moved in. So it's great for the neighborhood. Yeah. No, I was about to say, I mean, this has yeah. got to be like a, a million dollar neighborhood it's, uh, now at least. Yeah. I would say the, the cheapest house around here is probably around the half a million range. Really? Um, and that's the cheapest. And Prescott's gotten pretty uh, expensive as a place to live, like in Prescott, because yeah. we're landlocked by f National Forest and all on three sides. So it can't grow here, you know, beyond the city limits to the sure. southeast and west. It can only grow north. So a lot of people have kind of uh, wanted to move here, but really can't so much. Yeah, yeah. So, so what does that mean with a national forest? There's just not a lot of build on it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's public land. It's uh, federally managed, so you can't really make a city out of it. Oh wow. Um, you know, you could lease it for mining. You can do logging. You can have hiking trails and all that stuff. But uh, sure. You know, as far as a place to live, uh, nope. I think Prescott's hovering right around fifty thousand people. Oh wow. Oh, that's uh, tiny. Yeah, it's not that big. But when you take the surrounding areas of like. Dewey, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, Paulden, it's well over 100,000 people. We're just really spread out. Wow. Yeah, so my it's... house is about, really only about 100 feet outside of city, city limits, but oh, the only okay. way you can get to it is through city roads, so you have to, uh, so we still get garbage collection, sewer, water, all that stuff. We just don't pay city taxes or get to vote in the city elections. Mm, how do you feel about that? Uh, it would be nice to be able to vote in the city elections, but at the same time, I built a full third of my house, and it was really nice to be in the county and not the city when it came to permitting. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah so, um, uh, so this is we're getting closer to downtown. Okay. And so the neighborhoods get older the closer you get to downtown. So we're going to go near like Mount Vernon and Virginia Street. So Prescott was settled in the late 1800s 
pretty much directly after the Civil War. And, oh, uh, wow. And it was the hub for, one of the hubs for the Indian Wars. So the, the fight to basically box up and ship out. And like Trail of Tears kind of thing, yeah. Exactly. Sure. So General Crook had his headquarters here at uh, Fort Whipple, which is actually right over here. Uh, and uh, they took all of the weaponry that they had developed during the Civil War and came back to fight the Indians and then make this kind of a, a center for that. So sure. it was centered here and in Camp Verde. And uh, so for better or for worse, certainly worse for the native population, uh, this town was founded and built and it was actually the state's first capital. What happened was most of these people who came and settled Prescott, the military uh, folks from the Union Army, came out here and uh, brought their style with them. Sure. So they were all from the East Coast and Upper Midwest and Midwest, and, and so they liked the Victorian style. So you have a lot of old Victorian homes around here. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it's really the only city you'll find in Arizona and a lot of the West that has these older homes like this. There are a lot of people from Prescott living here, and there's a lot of transplants. It's kind of both. Okay. But, you know, this is a free country, and we can live anywhere we want. So. Sure. Well, I was going to uh, say as well, uh, yeah, the pronunciation of the town. How, how do Pres you pronounce Prescott. Prescott. Okay, that's yeah, what like, I thought. Like biscuit. I had uh, I had some viewers try to tell me it was Prescott, and no. I was like, no, no I'm pretty sure get, it's not. You'll get run out of town if you talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll, interesting how much the square has changed as well, because a lot of these businesses, you know, in the 80s were just boarded up. Sure. They were covered in sheet metal and plywood and all of that. Now we have things like the Holiday Courtyard here. Sure. And, uh, you know, the, the courthouse is pretty much unchanged. But yeah, they they still operating out of there? Yeah. Yeah, it's still a courthouse. Oh, nice. It's kind of cool. But a lot of these buildings around here have been restored to either their former glory or, um, you know, something resembling. Well, that's kind of what it looks like, because I remember coming here as a kid and everything was, uh, yeah, definitely more run down. Yeah. And now it yeah. just looks so posh. So to the people that complain about, oh, yeah, all these Californians came in and changed everything, you know. And they, Is that true? Well, they did. Yeah, they brought money. Yeah. Is they that good, though, or, or is that bad? It's a mix. It's a yeah. mix. You know, I think it's mostly good. Yeah. I really like I like seeing these buildings restored. Sure. I like seeing the, you know, the awnings coming back to life and people coming in and going, wow, this used to be a really cool place. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these shops and things, they really seem to respect the history and, and really like it. Um, yeah. This is the Palace Saloon, which is the oldest operating bar in Arizona. Really? Yeah. You know, I found I, I feel really dumb for not knowing this, but I found out that bar is beer, what is it, beer and alcohol room? That's what that stands oh, for? Did no, you know I that? I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So we could both feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh, no, I like that this, yeah, they still have the saloons here. That is very cool. Yeah. And, and they got uh, National Register. Yeah, there's a everything. lot of buildings here on the National Register of Historic Places. In terms of like, obviously this to me looks like all tourist stuff. Yeah, yeah, and this this does cater to the uh, to the international tourists and, and the Phoenix tourists in the summer. This is wall to wall Phoenix tourists trying to get out of the heat. Yeah, um, so. yeah, it is about 10 degrees cooler here. It's it's a lot cooler, you know, and it's getting warmer every day. Ironically, like I was just in Mexico filming a video, mm -hmm. and they have uh, you know very walkable cities for yeah. a lot of different reasons. Lots of plazas. Yeah, 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 and that's kind of what this is, I noticed. You won't find a lot of plazas in Arizona. You'll find driving downtowns in Phoenix and Tucson. Yeah. You know, but like you go to, I think Flagstaff is the closest you'll get because you have a, an older community, you've got all these cool old buildings and you've got a very walkable downtown, but sure. it doesn't really have a focal point yeah. like this. Yeah, that's kind of what I noticed. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of like American culture, I'm mm -hmm. I'm realizing the more that I do this kind of stuff is that um, there's just a lot of lonely cities in yeah. this country. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go somewhere and it's kind of just like people driving. You don't talk to anyone. You know? Mm -hmm. I feel like here I could run into someone. Yeah, they drive into people. their garage directly and then go inside and don't come out. Yeah. What does this remind you of? Is there a movie it reminds you of? You know, I was actually just thinking that before you said that. 
What movie? Like, uh, take a DeLorean back in time kind of movie? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so... Almost like so a... So Hill Valley, California and Back to the Future is modeled That's Okay, I was just about this. to say Back to the Future. Because yeah. anywhere in the West, you will not find a courthouse like this. You will not find it So do people really. use this for, for movies and stuff? Um, this actually wasn't used in the movie. They built it on a set. Oh, but yeah. they modeled it after this. Okay. So. Oh, something we said for Victorian homes are just a lot cozier feeling. They are cozier feeling on the outside. Yeah. Trying to live in one is miserable. Is it? You don't like it? Well, well, you know, they're they're narrow, tall rooms. They're small, lots of hallways. Yeah. Um, you know, they're kind of drafty. Sure. The insulation's usually like stuffed newspaper. You've got That's so, settling just, issues. You've you got know, all I sorts tell of people that all my friends that are from Arizona, I'm like, yeah. yeah, it gets cold actually like I mean it is cold out east, but it's colder yeah. because they put newspaper in the wall. Right. And I you know, and if it catches fire it's gonna go up like a torch. Right. Um but uh that's a pretty cool view, isn't it? Oh that's amazing. Yeah. Who's this on uh, That's Bucky O'Neill. He was one of the one of uh the Rough Riders. Oh, nice. With, uh, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I always think cool. of cowboys being in the desert, but they actually were all up here first. Yeah, up in the woods and, yeah. uh, and all around. Yeah, I know. And, uh, you know, the, the dusty desert with the tumbleweeds and all yeah. that stuff, which, fun fact, tumbleweeds didn't appear till later. Uh, really? Yeah, we didn't have any tumbleweeds in the West. How, how did that come to pass? On the, um, on the pant legs of Chinese railroad workers. Really? So every part of a tumbleweed is a seed. Huh. So they were wearing wool pants, the seeds stuck to their pants, they came across the ocean, walked through the desert, dropped the seeds, and now we have tumbleweeds. I actually had no idea about that. Yeah. That's, that's quite interesting. Yeah. But I think Prescott's really still managed to embrace its identity yeah. pretty well and, and check it out. And, uh, oh, that was cool. You know, like, we, we really take pride in our relics, like the Courthouse Square and the Elks yeah. Theater, the Hacienda Inn over here, which was cool Art Nouveau place built in the 30s. We can walk through that if you want. Sure. Yeah, in terms of like the politics of the town, is everyone on the same page or is it <laughs> clashing now? So if you talk to somebody on the right, they'll say, oh yeah, we're a Republican town, straight American, red-blooded. But really it's only about between 40 and 50 percent okay. of that. Sure. And then, you know, there's 40 percent that's identifies more as left wing, but we keep pretty quiet about that. I don't talk too much about it. Really? You, know, you see a Subaru, you can... Well <laughs> uh, people people uh, don't embrace it here, huh? Yeah, and then there's a lot of people that are just in the middle. Sure. But a lot of the folks on the right feel like this is a right wing town and it belongs to them, so they're super loud. Interesting. But really, everybody's very personable. Yeah. You meet face to face, everybody's friends, nobody's got problems. It's when you get distance from people you say oh those kind of people over there sure you know? yeah you come out here on a saturday night or when there's live music playing everybody's all here together it's sure fun. it's funny to look at pictures from like the dawn of photography the first people who came in through here yeah because it's all ponderosa pines it's like flagstaff like big wide meadows and rolling hills and and springs and creeks they had a... and then you look at the pictures from post-civil war and it's kind of desert because they cut down all the trees to make all the buildings. Oh, sure. So, um, so all this like had all to... those big, dense trees that you see on Mount Vernon. They had to grow back. They had to grow back. Okay. Right. If you want to hear some really amazing jazz, just stick your nose in some of these old bars and you'll find some pretty incredible jazz musicians that retire out here. And they'll just come, you know, every Tuesday night and jam. Yeah. You know? That's cool. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Oh, wow. Hi, thanks. Yeah, so this is the Haciampa. Yeah, this has got to be like some dough. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that bad to stay in here. Is it really? The rooms aren't all that big. <laughs> They're pretty um, small. Yeah, this but, is amazing. But yeah, if you look at the ceiling, especially. Yeah, look at that. Uh, and it's been fully restored over many years. You know, it was built in 1927. Wow. Uh, so oh, it's, it's not even that old. It's got a very actually. cool Art Nouveau style to it, you know. Yeah. And you look at things like the light fixtures and I love and it. all of that. It's just got a great... Oh, they got one of these here. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in terms of like, um, I mean, like let's say, you know, because I, I mean, I can just tell, right, by like looking at all the buildings, mm -hmm. 
there's money here. Um, yeah. So in terms of like, which is a good thing. I mean, it's, I mean, this is like the cleanest street. You ain't gonna find streets this clean yeah. in most, you know, medium-sized or big cities. Correct. And um, so, you know, obviously, you know, there's some tax money. And um, yeah. <laughs> if you were gonna work though, like at you know one of these local shops, I mean, would you even be able to afford to live here? Like what, what is the cost of living it's here? It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Uh, an apartment around here is going to run you like 2600 bucks a month. Whoa. You know? That's like got to be more than Phoenix, actually. And, and most of the people I work with uh, can't afford to live in this area. I believe I've worked with only one other person that actually lives in this town, in Prescott. Really? Most of the rest of them live out in Chino Valley, Skull Valley, uh, Prescott Valley. Sure. But... Uh, and honestly, I don't think if I hadn't bought a house in 2005 that I could afford to now. So this is my friend's frame shop here. Okay. I had his frame shop. They do great work. They need anything framed. This is the place to do it. Are we, uh, are we allowed to go in or do you think they'd, they'd yeah. not be cool with that? I don't know. I think know. they would totally be cool with that. Oh, yeah. this is beautiful. And there's a lot of local art. How's it going? My friend Sergi's making a How's documentary about small towns in Arizona. And what's your uh, what's your favorite painting? It's one of the easy one I'm working on because it's, it's what I'm excited about. Sure, yeah, I understand. I'm figure out what I'm doing here. Nice. What's the uh, yeah, viewpoint? It's um, Mojave, I think. Okay. You actually went to this location to okay. do most of this? I took a photo. I was doing a, a small little study. This is a photo of the sunset. Sure. That was very cool. How how is it like you know to be an artist living in Prescott? Looks out for me because I gotta work here. But um, <laughs> my frames would cost, and there's there's a lot of art collectors here, so there's a good fault, you know. Yeah. Good kind of customer base to tap into. That's good. But, um, this is, this is, everything here is yours, right? Yeah. Except wow. for the turtle. Yeah, I guess. Uh, wait, which one? The, the oils. The turtle. Oh yeah. sure. Well, yeah, you you kind of have your own style. I can I can just tell by looking which, which one is yours. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> this is great. This one. Yeah, I love that. The that's texture awesome. is amazing. Yeah, that's a nice painting, so they end up having more sculptural. Yeah, the the light in this one is is outstanding. I was just up in Zion two weeks ago. Kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. To go back to your comment earlier for a second, you know, I know you said it heavily. Uh, heavily right-leaning uh, town, mm -hmm. but you also mentioned there's a lot of artists here, and um, yeah. I was, you know, there's always a lot of debate, I guess, uh, with uh, people like, they will say, well, well people like the right-leaning are not creative or they're not artists. I mean, how, is that a thing here, I guess, no, you know? No, it's not. In fact, a lot of the artists I know are very right-leaning. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I personally don't necessarily agree with that that statement, but I was, I always wonder about that because I do. I mean, normally you find art stuff in more like left leaning towns and stuff, yes. but that's obviously not the case here. Uh, well, Prescott's very strong with Western art, so that skews things a little bit because a lot of the, a lot of, I mean, people of all demographics make art. Everybody makes some some kind of art. Sure, absolutely. You know? uh, and among a lot of the Westerners, you find that they're more. Uh, middle of the road or right leaning one way or the other sure you know they'll when you paint a lot as I have um, you tend to sit around and listen to something yeah uh, absolutely a lot of those guys just listen to Rush Limbaugh a <laughs> so painting a <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny actually you know painting a western landscape listening to Rush Limbaugh all day so that gets into your head the inspiration or they, you know you keep something on whether it's Fox News or Sure. For me, I'd like rip through all the Star Wars movies, or I'd rip really? through all the Indiana Jones movies while I'm working or something like that. Okay. But it's different for everybody. After you. Now, you want a really great place to eat. This place? Elgato Azul, owned Ooh, by I might Barry do Barbie, it. Our, our local, okay. local guy. He opens up a restaurant around here, lines out the door. It's always hopping, always busy. It Tuesday looks like it. Packed. These are some narrow steps here. Yeah, they are. I was like <laughs> almost falling off of them. So something I noticed just right off the bat, mm -hmm. I mean, in a big city right now, you typically, you know, have some tents lining the, yeah. this kind of area or homeless people. Yeah. You guys have any of that here? We do. We have a little bit of that. Um, Granite Creek Park, 
which my students always called Stabby Creek Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gorgeous park with a high homeless population. Um, it's since abated a little bit, but the weather's nice, and anywhere the weather's nice. Sure. And you can camp out. You know, you'll have homeless. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch sides sure. for a second so I can get the oh, view yes, here right the of you. All right. So this was just kind of a wash for a long time. And sure. So they came in a few years ago and kind of beautified this, put a path in. For a long time, Prescott... Uh, Prescott. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Prescott. <laughs> Took um, advantage yeah, we of can... some laws that allowed you... Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, took advantage of some laws that allowed you to put in a halfway house and pretty much anybody could put in a rehab. Oh, really? Uh, and all you had to do was sign some paperwork, you get a bunch of money from the state, and you could you could put in a rehab and just basically make a house for a whole bunch of drug addicts Oh wow! and just collect money. And you didn't have to have a rehabilitation program, you didn't have to do anything. Wow. And so rehab houses cropped up like early 2000s all over town. Sure. Absolutely everywhere in neighborhoods and, and, and so, you know, once somebody caught got caught using in one of the houses they just kick them out wow so um, oh, and then they just be homeless and then they'd be homeless you know a lot of the beautification here putting in walking paths and stuff makes it a harder place to camp sure you know so absolutely you want yeah. a place to camp that's kind of out of the way and a little quieter yeah because they have uh they have like laws in prescott in terms of uh, camping you know on the street or whatever because you know i know tucson now finally uh in all the nice areas essentially they put a signs basically and like no panhandling yeah and they actually yeah. enforce it i don't know how it's rough you know it's a, it's a rough situation to try and alleviate because unless you until you address the causes of something like that you're not going to address the problem as long as you keep just saying well being homeless is illegal yeah. you haven't solved the problem yeah you just pushed it down the road a little bit i know it kind of doesn't even make sense you know it's like yeah. it's a <laughs> so if you don't address what causes people to be homeless in the first place sure whether it's mental health care or welfare or any of those things sure then you aren't you know you're just sticking a gross band-aid over the problem and not fixing it yeah for sure so that's that can be a bit of a problem yeah but yeah this is beautiful is this uh is this pretty safe you know at night if you're gonna walk this kind of yeah, thing yeah I'd, I'd walk down you, here you do night. it yeah 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 well hi buddy <laughs> oh tough guy oh yeah because people are literally just oh that's so funny please do not feed the dog <laughs> tough guy oh yeah because people's houses just back up onto this this yeah and it's funny if you want to buy like this house you're looking at you know half a million are you serious <laughs> yeah. wow yeah, all these houses right here. Well, you're right backed up the creek. You're walking distance from downtown. In a way, it's a blessing and a curse because you got this beautiful view, but all these people looking at your backyard all the time. <laughs> well, downtown can be a real snarl in the summer. Like Fourth of July weekend is huge. Oh yeah. Uh, they do the courthouse lighting in the in the winter, which is also a big deal. Yeah, I remember coming um, down here for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's it's actually pretty nice to just be walking or bike riding distance from downtown because you don't have to navigate it at all. But wow. we, we usually try to escape the week of 4th of July because it gets pretty nuts. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of outer towners here for the rodeo and stuff. So. Yeah, would you, uh, would you recommend? Yeah, you know what? This is, I feel like every city in America needs this right here. Yeah. Just a walkable, Yeah. just some nice stuff. Yeah. You know? So this is our old railroad bridge. The railroad ran through here, I think up until the 1980s, I believe. Okay. Um, and so it ran straight across here. The roundhouse was right across in the plaza where where grocery store is now. Sure. The uh, old train station is now a law office. But yeah, they, it's beautiful. Uh, put this big hotel in a few years ago, and one of the stipulations was they have to protect the bridge for everyone. So, sure. The bridge stays a landmark, but when I was a kid, there were railroad tracks here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have noticed more American flags here than yeah. other other towns. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, there were four years where they were all Trump flags. That was, I see. <laughs> that was rough. That's kind of funny. For uh, several weeks after uh, after he lost, there were a bunch of rednecks and their lifted trucks and. And oh, just semis, driving around with them? Driving around the square with these Trump flags. You like, know what's funny is, the to me, the, those guys kind of always look like the same guy. You ever notice that? I have noticed that. <laughs> the, the ball cap and beard in Oakley's. Yeah, guys, yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of those around here. 
Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Yep. Again, super polite if you're just talking yeah, yeah, to them yeah. person to person. Well, you know, that's what I notice though with every place I go to. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Um, yeah. When, when you can actually talk to someone and get to know them, you mm -hmm. realize you all have so much in common. Yeah. You know, that it's, and this stuff does not matter to divide the us. Politics are not your personality, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, that's what it's become, though. I feel like it's become everyone's personality, you know? Uh, you know, I think, when I, whatever I see a truck with all the flags and stuff all over, I think, is, is that your personality? Who are you? Like, who I are you? I think about that, person? too. Yeah. You know, is, is that you? Is that. I mean, we've all known people who just like take up an identity and they make this external thing their identity, whether it's like Monster Energy Drake or whether it's skateboarding or whether it's politics or, sure. or any of those things. And you think, well, what? How are you expressing yourself? You know, yeah. how, are, how do you express yourself through that? Yeah. Because you probably don't know any politicians personally. Yeah, that's so you know? true. And they probably don't give a flying crap about your truck. Yeah, that's also so, probably true. Yeah. Yeah, and if you did know one, you probably wouldn't end up voting for him because you'd know too much. In here and All right. check it out. You want a beverage? Sure. I would love an iced chai to go. Uh, I'm going to get a, a flat white, please. Oh. Go ahead, I need to get to. and. Yeah. That's a house. What? <laughs> this is a house? That's a house. Wow. I wonder, do you know who li who lives here? Have you I, ever met them? I don't. It sold a little while ago. Um, I, mean, I just wonder, like, how much does even cost to buy? I mean, it's got to be, like... It was up for, like, $23 million, That's what I, I think it sold for, like, $1.2 or something like that. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they took a it's, bath. It's super bizarre. House. Yeah. It's got an elevator on the inside, and, of course, you've got this, this kind of greenhouse up above, which has, I mean, that's... That's Mount Humphrey, so Fla that's Flagstaff. Oh, look you can at that. see the city lights of Flagstaff from here, and that's 110 miles away. Wow. And then you've got uh, Bill Williams Mountain over there, and the only thing past that is the Grand Canyon. Wow. So, yeah, this is yeah. this is. I a, mean, that's not bad either. This right here. Yeah. Oh no, I love that. That's very cozy. I don't know. If, I, honestly, though, as much as cool as that house is, like for me personally, I would I would almost not want to look at that. It's a little I, crazy. It's it? kind of an eyesore. Crazy. I would pay it for the, like the rock behind it. Yeah, that's what I, I think the paint job. Yeah. But here's the cool thing about this house. Look how small its footprint is. Yeah, that is cool. There's no lawn. There's no landscaping. There's no pool. It's it's this enormous house on this little tiny footprint. Yeah. And so it disrupts the landscape so much less than these places that have like big expanses of gravel or you know yeah. big lawns big irrigated lawns it's got this little pinpoint on the ground and everything else they left natural which i really love about it that you is know? cool that's that's a good point it's it's definitely out there definitely bizarre i don't know if i'd want to live in it <laughs> but it's it's it doesn't feel like homey to me i guess for me personally it's, it's, yeah it's kind of industrial yeah 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 you know? We're in a weird kind of spot right now in our country with like, you know, economically speaking, where there's a lot of people that feel like now they're, they're not going to be able to get ahead. They're not going to be able to retire. I mm -hmm. mean, how, um, what are your thoughts on that? You know, especially for someone like my age, what, what are your thoughts? Like, what do you think, what, what do you think the answer or the future holds? I think you guys got super screwed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fair <laughs> you enough. Know, I think that, that generations before you, did their best to gobble up resources and then hoarded them for themselves. Yeah, because I, I feel um, like I'll never be able to own a house potentially in Prescott. I mean, unless I really hit the jackpot. Sucks. You know? But here's something to keep your eye on. Prescott is a place where a lot of people go to die. You know, the boomer generation, they're all in their 70s, and they're not going to live forever. At some point, there's going to be this cliff where they they drop off where everybody dies all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And all of these mansions around here and there's nobody to buy them. They're all gonna go down in they're value. They're all gonna go drop in value or they're gonna become more affordable or available for you guys to snatch up. Huh. And so position yourself for that eventuality. I think it's gonna happen. That is an interest. you know what? I've not heard anyone talk about that so far. And on top of that, we have a population that is increasing and increasing, but slower and slower. And we're gonna reach a point in about 20 years, maybe a little less, where our population is going to start declining and it's never going to grow again. 
Wow. Because people your age are choosing to have no kids or one kid or two sure. kids. They're not having seven kids. Yeah. They're having a couple. Religiosity is a major driver of demographics and population increase. Sure. You have Catholic families, Mormon families that, that are large, right? But as people start to drift away from those sort of lifestyles, they start to want to have kids a little less. Like, maybe I want to focus on myself, or maybe I just want two kids. I've got two kids. Yeah. You know, but those two kids... My daughter probably she doesn't want kids. Really, you know, I, I do want to have kids. Actually, my son might. You yeah, still time. I I plan on having kids. We had kids when I turned thirty. Really? So, do you feel like that's a good age? Great age. Yeah. I get to have fun in my twenties and, and sit down <laughs> and be responsible. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could always do things differently, but sure. The way I did it turned out pretty good. So, like you don't you don't want to see my generation suffer. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't. I think you guys are the smartest, most worldly, kindest, best generation that we've ever seen. Wow. And the next generation is going to be even better. Yeah. You know, the older generation always likes to complain about younger generations, and then they immediately forget that they're the ones who raise those younger generations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, I've always thought that. <laughs> maybe it comes from being a teacher. Um, being surrounded by younger people. Yeah. But I like that optimistic philosophy. And I like hanging out with people who are your age. Sure. I went back to school for radiology in my 40s. And I was surrounded by people in their 20s. And I loved it. Because these were people that still had ideas and dreams and future plans. Yeah, they're not jaded yet. So not only jaded, but a lot of people, when they reach my age, settle in, settle down, and start to protect their money. Yeah. And that's what they're thinking about. They're thinking about retirement and protecting what they have rather than getting new things or building new things and creating new things. I think that, you know, you can always make money, but you can't eat it. Yeah. And and the one thing that I want that I can't make and will never be able to make more of is time. Sure. You know, I'm I'm 51. Yeah. If If I'm on that clock... I've got 24 years. Wow. That's it. Man. That's all I got. I got 24 years to climb that thing, to paddle that river, to build that barn, to paint that painting, and that's all the time I have. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to live longer than that. You seem like a pretty healthy guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there could be there could be a bus. There, I always say that to literally everyone. I'm like, I can get hit by a car tomorrow. There, there could be a meteor, you know? You know? There sure. could be a heart attack. Yeah. There could be any number of things. I, you know what? I and I feel like even though I am obviously way younger, I, I do, I don't know, I guess I've had a kind of a weird life, obviously. So <laughs> I, I do feel like I share that sentiment, although I don't have kids right now. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think... Um, yeah, I think I've even noticed for myself personally, like, the only thing I have in this life is time. Mm -hmm. And all, there's so yeah. many things that kind of don't matter. Bruce Lee said, if you love life, don't, don't waste time. Yeah. And that's the thing I, I'm always thinking of, like, there's not a minute to waste. Yeah, there's not think a you're right. second, you know? And, and You don't want to be stuck in that rat race. At the same time, you don't want to run so hard that you miss, on, miss things. Yeah. But, you know, when there's a sunset, take a moment, step outside and look at it. You know, Absolutely. even if it's just 30 seconds. You know, if, if there's something cool on the side of the road that you want to check out, go check it out. You might not, never be back down that road. I really appreciate it, Ron. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a blast. It's really fun. Absolutely.